An intriguing aspect of the device program is it does allow us to evaluate the heart in terms of its ability to recover. Um, certainly whenever we implant these devices we tell them that our overriding goal is to get you to a transplant and if a great donor organ becomes available we're going to transplant you. But during the time that you're waiting we continue to assess you and if we find that you have evidence that your native heart has started to recover we may come to you and offer you the opportunity of having the device taken out uh, and sending you home with your native heart function. And we've done that on a couple patients and have had very gratifying results. But certainly when the device first goes in, our overriding goal and our aim is to get that patient transplanted as soon as we think it's safe to do so. The phone rung. I was in another room at the time and, and I heard my wife talking on the phone so I knew I had to get ready to get back here. But we kept the bag packed because we knew that the call could come at any time or during the night. We had the call at 6 o'clock at night and they asked us to be here by 8 o'clock. The operation was at 12 o'clock and it took seven and a half hours. On October 21st, 2004, one month after his LVAD was implanted, Mike McDonald was given a new heart. He was one of 143 people to receive a heart transplant in Canada that year. Mike was one of the lucky ones. For 18% of those on the transplant list, don't live long enough to receive that gift of life, a donor heart. Since Dr. Christiane Barnard performed the first heart transplant in 1967 in Cape Town, South Africa, there have been over 75,000 heart transplants performed worldwide. You know, we're in the transplant business, but I think when you speak to Dr. Rao, what he will say is we are in the business of replacement therapies for patients with end-stage heart failure. And that really is the future for us because there will never be enough donors to meet the need for heart transplant patients. So apart from medical therapies and device therapies, we are looking to stem cell therapies and regenerative medicine as really being one of the major uh, growth areas for us. Regenerative medicine is the fastest growing division of medicine in the world. It utilizes therapies developed from products naturally occurring in the body, such as genes, tissues, cells, and other biomaterials. One of UHN's senior scientists is Dr. Richard Wiesel, a cardiovascular surgeon with a major research interest in cell transplantation. Patients who've had a major heart attack, uh, we can do their bypasses, but unfortunately we can't restore back to normal the part of the heart that was injured with a heart attack. So what we've been doing in the lab is trying to develop a new technique to take um, the patient's own cells and grow them in the laboratory to replace the heart cells that were lost during the heart attack. Dr. Wiesel and Dr. Rinky Lee have clearly shown that they can make cells that normally are not heart muscle cells, that they can actually make them beat. So by actually putting the cells into a mesh, he's actually been able to show that he can make the mesh contract much like a heart muscle would. We can either use heart cells, but right now we're using uh, cells from the bone marrow. And uh, we do this the way they do any bone marrow a biopsy. Uh, just put a small needle into a major bone, take a few of the cells out, and inside we find stem cells, cells that are able to grow and differentiate into heart cells. And that's what we've been using is those cells to replace the ones that were lost from the heart attack. We're looking at ways where we can uh, place a patient on device support uh, and allow them time to have novel therapeutic strategies such as cell transplantation or gene therapy take effect um, and therefore keep a patient uh, alive and, and well perfused for a period of time uh, until the, the cells that we've transplanted uh, have grown and multiplied and rebuilt uh, a scarred and damaged heart to the point that we can take the device out safely and send them home with a, a regenerated heart. This would be particularly beneficial for children who have uh, holes in their heart or an abnormal heart who we really don't have a good treatment for now. We found recently that the heart does in fact heal itself. It does regrow its own tissue, but obviously it doesn't do it adequately. At the moment, we're able to grow enough cells to replace an area that was lost with a heart attack. Our goal is to grow enough cells to replace a major portion of the heart. When we said that this would work six years ago, everyone said no way. But now it's become a clinical reality. I think everyone has understood 
that in fact this can happen, it likely will happen. I just hope it will happen within my lifetime. <laughs> Mike is a classic example. He was stable for a period of time and then something happened and his heart failure progressed past a point where we were able to pull him back and treat him with medications. So if we see that on a growing scale in the country, we need to have other treatment options. I think that probably none of these techniques all by themselves will be, will be used. Instead, we'll probably have a combination of medications of devices like the uh, left ventricular assist device and of cell therapy, gene therapy and protein therapy. And we we'll use all of them simultaneously to correct all the different defects that occur. I'm so happy to have a basically a new life uh, that at one time we thought we were going to lose. Um, I just Thank God, my wife and daughter and the people at Toronto General were the best people in the world. The way I felt when I seen him alive meant everything in the world to me. But when he got the heart, it didn't just save one heart, it saved our whole family's heart. Mike's family will now celebrate two birthdays every year with him. His first being August 9, 1948, and the second, the day of his heart transplant, October 21st, 2004. Mike's transplant has allowed him to experience something very dear to him, the arrival of his third granddaughter, Olivia. Mike's new lease on life would not have been possible without UHN's medical staff and researchers' dedication to finding the answers. I'm Sheila Walsh. Thanks for watching. You know, you got emotions too. You're very, very happy that uh, that this machine was keeping you alive till such times as a heart transplant. He just, he just can't sit still now. I think he's making up for lost time. <laughs> I haven't had a patient yet want their device back in after they've had a successful transplant, so they eventually see the light. I think the biggest lesson I've learned from patients is that life is precious and it is fragile. It is very fragile. Well, we're hoping to develop a, another technique and that is to take um, these cells and to grow an, an entire heart. The doctor says he has a very happy heart. It's happy where it is. <laughs>